So basically, Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. I thought I would do just like a quick catch up video about what's going on and what I've been up to because I haven't been around in a couple of weeks and I never intentionally take these times off. Time, time off? I never intentionally take time off, but it's more of that, I wasn't even like taking time off. It's just been kind of crazy. And every time I was like getting close to like, and I should be posting or I need to be posting. And I actually have video footage that I filmed and I just haven't edited yet. I just obviously haven't done it. So I just wanted to check in with you guys. Everything is perfectly fine. It's just life. I mean, it's just, things are happening. It's a season and I am my best self in some areas and I am not my best self in other areas. And this is just been one of the things that has been sacrificed on the list of what gets done. So I just wanted to pop in and say, hey, let you guys know what I'm up to. I'm obviously doing a little bit of filming today. Maybe it's not obvious to you guys. I'm doing a little bit of filming today. So there will be some content coming your way soon or has already started to come back by the time you've seen this. So like I said, everything's perfectly fine. This is not like some confessional tea spilling kind of a kind of a sit down situation or anything like that. Full disclosure, work has been completely bonkers. It's just completely nuts. There is so much stuff going on at work with changes that are happening, with uncertainty that's happening, with projects that are coming my way. I am super grateful to be busy. It definitely makes the days go faster. And sometimes, some days, way too fast. Not that I ever want to beg for more time to a work day, but I've definitely just found myself like constantly going. And I have a very heavy computer job. I'm on my computer all day long. And on particularly heavy work days, I can spend at least half if not more of that time on video calls and video meetings and at the end of the day the last thing i want to do is hop on my computer and start editing videos and looking at my face a little bit more because as much as i try not to when i'm on a zooms or a team video i can't help but look at myself but anyway i just like i can't like my eyes just can't deal with it they just can't and i've just been pooped by it all it's just been Again, like it's perfectly fine, but it's just been very long, exhausting kind of days. And on the upside, thank you, Daylight Savings, it is brighter later at night. So I have kind of switched up my routine and I've been trying some different things since the beginning of the new year, but I've started to take walks after work and I used to do it before work. And I am finding it is such a perfect way to end my day to just get up, to move, to get outside, and then there's no pressure on the other end. So when I was walking in the morning, I obviously was limited on my time because I had to come home and get dressed and like do all the things and get a shower and blah, 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 to be ready for work. But at night I can just go and then just like go wherever it takes me. So I have been taking really long, really wonderful walks at night, even when the weather's not perfect. And right now, like I'm filming on a Sunday, it's raining right now, there's supposed to be a break later but I am happily back into that mode where I just want to get outside and walk and I just want to be outdoors. So I'm hoping there's like a break where I can get out later, but I've been spending like my evenings doing that. And then you guys know, by the time you get home, it just, the night goes like that. So all that to say, YouTube has been the thing that I've kind of sacrificed. So I have not been writing and I haven't actually sacrificed writing. I just haven't been in the mood, which is not an excuse because nine out of 10 times I'm not in the mood, but I haven't forced myself to sit down. I've been feeling the urge coming back. I've been like, <laughs> writing in my head that's so not a thing I mean it's a thing but it's not a thing I have nothing to show for it so I do want to get back into that but I have been holding really really strong with my morning pages in the morning if you guys have seen some of my vlogs you've seen me do that I have done sort of my morning routine with gratitude list and meditation and like all the things that I do to sort of get me right for the day and I honestly just have been struggling with figure out what right is and struggling with a lot of the stress that's going on at work and just sort of struggling with some stress in general. Like it just, like I said, I have not been my best self in certain areas of my life. And it's just not every day is easy. And I don't think anybody would say it is. And I never pretend that it is, but I'm just trying to do what feels right and figure out what's working for me. So I haven't been writing and I'm trying to not beat myself up about it, but I'm also trying to figure out how to not let myself off the hook about it either. 
And I have a really good habit, bad habit, of letting myself off the hook for things. So I will make lists and I will make promises to myself and I will say I'm going to do the things and I will say I'm going to write the things and it can be everything from my decluttering project, which I have completely abandoned, to working on my second draft and like my Goodreads is atrocious, my writing or my book journal is atrocious. I just haven't been keeping up with things that normally I want to keep up with and normally that makes me really happy. And I'm just trying to figure out how to figure it all out, basically. So yes, I haven't been writing either. <laughs> talk about all the things I haven't been doing. Let's talk about some of the things I have been doing. I have been reading. Reading is going very well, I would say. So right now, it is April 3rd when I'm filming this. I am reading Things We Do in the Dark by Jennifer Hillier. This is her new book that comes out in June. If you guys have been here for more than a minute, you know I am obsessed with her. This comes out in July. Riley Sager comes out in June. So Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand and I are buddy reading this together right now. I am like just like at that halfway part, like basically right down the middle. I love it, you guys. I love her. I am such a huge fan of hers. So I don't want to say too much about the plot because I'm partway in it and I just never want to give anything ever away. So well, I will say on the opening pages of the book, we have a woman named Paris and she is found unconscious and bloody next to the body of her husband who is dead and she winds up getting arrested for his murder. So that's how it starts. And I'm just totally here for it. I'm totally, totally here for it. And we will see. I do feel like this is one of those books where we are supposed to be ahead of the characters in some ways and on the journey with the characters in other ways, if that makes sense. Uh, I will also say I have now officially read her entire backlist and I love seeing the threads from the beginning to here in her writing, in her style, things that she gravitates towards, winks she has, just sort of her love for certain characters or certain go-tos. I'm not going to say anything else because I don't want to give anything else away. Long story short, I'm loving it. So my mission was also to read Rachel's Holiday reread by Marion Keys because again Rachel comes out on the 5th two days from today my pre-order is supposed to be here Tuesday I read one chapter of Rachel's Holiday because Sarah and I decided to buddy read things we do in the dark together so after I finish this I will probably go to Rachel's Holiday I don't know never say never I just filmed a TBR video today for an upcoming readathon which you guys may or may not have seen by now. And I now want to read every book that I'm staring at at this giant pile on my floor, or actually one, two, three, four piles of books on my floor right now. So we'll see what happens. But I'm going to read Rachel's Holiday before I read again, Rachel, but I'm very excited. But one chapter into Rachel's Holiday and I was like, yep, Marion Keys is a goddess. There's a reason why I absolutely love her. There is a reason why I worship everything that she ever writes and I can't believe I haven't read her in forever. So I'm very excited to get back into that. I also did get the audiobook of it. That's like a 580 page book or something huge. I forgot how huge it is. It's up high on my shelf so I'm not gonna get up and get it for you guys. But oh that's obnoxious. Let me just get up and get it for you guys. I mean like how lazy can I be? So it's it's not a small book. I want to say it's like a 17 hour audiobook and when I saw that I was like that's nuts. This book can't be that long, 565 pages, excuse me. It's huge and it's heavy, but I'm excited. So I am 11 pages in, but already reminded why I love this book so much. So that is on my non-TBR TBR as always. So that pre-order is coming. I did a whole video, if you guys haven't seen it, about all of my planned or completed pre-orders for 2022. So again, Rachel is the newest one that is coming. And then there's a Ragnar Jonasson coming at the end of April. So I'm excited about that. I also picked up a couple books recently. So I picked up, I don't think I talked about this in a different video because I don't think it had come by that point, but I got Seven Minutes Later by Bonnie Kistler. This is The Cage in the US. So this is the UK edition of it. This was like less than $7 on Book Depository on this ridiculous sale. And I don't even know why. And I didn't care why because I, I bought it. I bought it. So Sarah read The Cage recently and she said she really enjoyed it. This is two co-workers walk into an elevator at the end of the day and only one of them comes out alive. I mean, 
A lot of things can happen in an elevator. I'm curious what happens in this one. So yes, by the time they reach the ground floor, one of them is dead. I don't know if they get stuck in the elevator. I don't know if something really bad happens in like the 20 seconds it takes to get from the top floor to the bottom. I have been stuck in an elevator. I have told you guys this before. I used to work in commercial real estate, so I used to manage high-rise office buildings. I have seen some really messed up stuff. I have known some really messed up stuff that can happen in elevators. I've also known some very salacious stuff that can happen in an elevator. So I'm excited for this. It reminds me of The Escape Room by Megan Golden. So we'll find out what happens in this book. But I picked this book up. I also picked up, let me find it in my pile, because I referenced it in my video that I just filmed. So my favorite thing to do these days is rather than buying new books, I say as I just showed you guys this one, I also want to work on my book collection. So to me, there's like buying books and there's collecting books. So for me, collecting books are books that I am obsessed with, books that I want to have on my shelf. Maybe I'm replacing an old edition of a book. Maybe there's a special edition of a book that I want to have if we were villains and B.E. Schwab's Addie LaRue are right over here. If there's a favorite author of mine and I just am obsessed with the collection, if there's a UK cover that's better than a US cover. So I treated myself to The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson. So I have the US paperback of this, that bright yellow one, but I love that book so much. And I have been scouring for a while. I found this on Abe Books. This is the UK original hardcover of the book. And I just love it. It just came yesterday. It is in mint condition as advertised and I couldn't be more excited about it. I am definitely planning to reread this book and I'm just so excited to have this hardcover edition of it. And I just finished, last month I read Nine Lives. With the exception of The Kind Worth Killing, I have all of his books that I own are hardcovers and I know it doesn't matter, but like if you're a book person, it still maybe doesn't matter, but I wanted to have it. And I was so excited to find it for a really, really good deal. So I wound up picking up The Kind Worth Killing. That was my first purchase from Abe Books. So I'm very, very pleased with the whole, like, the whole experience. And I will definitely be shopping them again soon. And then the next one I got for the collection pile, wait for it. You guys, your friend has a problem here. In case, in case anyone had any doubt, there's problems happening here. But problems I justify. So this was completely unnecessary. But at the same time, I couldn't resist. It is not as pristine as I wanted it to be. So I'm a little bummed. But at the same time, you know, it happens. It was a former library book. So... I got the UK hardcover of Final Girls by Riley Sager. You guys, it's hot pink, it's beautiful, but it's sun faded on the side, which is such a bummer, because the back is great, and then it has painted edges, which I didn't even know. The top is a little faded. God, it looks worse on camera. Um, so it's a little bit of a bummer, but it was a library book. So it definitely must have like just been in the sun. But the book itself is perfect. It's absolutely perfect. So I got this from Better World Books. This was shipped directly from the UK. Again, great shipping experience, came in great condition. Um, like there's no, there's no issues with like the book itself. I am, you know, I'm just obsessed with him. And I saw this and I was like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. I have been stocking this edition for a really long time. So a little bit of a bummer. It's a lot of a bummer that the spine looks like that. But I have it. I might continue to look for others because I'm, but probably not. I mean, how psychotic can one girl get? Uh, but I'm really just excited to have it. I'm really, really excited to have it. And I think slash no, I am going to buy the UK cover of The House Across the Lake, his newest book. I saw the reveal and I love it. So I'm definitely gonna get that. And I'm just so obsessed with him. You guys know I'm just totally obsessed with him. So I wound up getting that. That's the last thing I got. Um, everything else has just been here for ages. And then, like I said, I have the new Marion Keys book coming on Tuesday. So I'm very excited for that one too. And then I have gotten 
back into, so I had not been into like a TV show in a really long time, like a serialized, wanted to like turn it on all the time, binge watch kind of a TV show situation. I need to uncross my legs because they're hurting because I've been sitting here for so long. All right. So I watched Mayor of Easttown, it could have been like a month ago now, and I loved it. Kate Winslet is amazing. That was another one of those TV shows I stayed completely spoiler free on. And she was winning like every award and Jean Smart was winning every award and the show was getting such great accolades. And I watched it compulsively and it is so good. And I feel like I talked about this briefly in a different video. It's very broad churchy. It's very the killing. She is spectacular in it. Every actor and actress in that show is so amazing and I was shocked and surprised and it just was so beautifully done. I highly, hugely recommend it. If you like police procedurals, we had a mystery in the past of a girl who went missing a year ago. We had a mystery in the present of a murder. It's a small town in Pennsylvania. She is a police detective and it is family dynamics. It is the crime. It is the small town feeling of it all. And there's just so many secrets and lies and it's just absolutely amazing and shocking and twisted and perfect in every way. And then after I watched that, I'm trying to think, what on earth did I watch next? i have been dipping in and out of The Good Wife, like rewatching that, which I hadn't seen in forever, which I was loving. But I also was finding I am so guilty of multitasking while I'm watching television and just missing stuff. And I don't give my attention to the thing I'm doing and I don't give my attention to the show and it's just not good. So it's one of the habits I'm trying to break and be better about where if I'm gonna commit my X amount of time in front of the TV, that's all I'm gonna do. No computer, no iPad, no phone, no other stuff distracting me, no writing, no taking notes, no making lists. Like if I'm gonna be doing that stuff, put on the music, put on something else, I'm not gonna put on a TV show that I wanna watch. And I am, this is a very hard habit for me to break. I'm super guilty of doing it. So I watched Scream, which I feel like I talked about maybe in another video. I was so excited to watch Scream. So I wound up watching it once, like straight through, hooked, all the feelings, all the emotions, all the shocks, all the turns. Like I wasn't trying to figure stuff out. I wasn't trying to look for stuff. I had stayed also magnificently spoiler free. Like I watched the trailer and like that was it. Like I didn't overanalyze it. I wasn't trying to figure out what was going on. I was just like in it to watch it as much as I am obsessed with that franchise. And then I watched it a second time looking for even more Easter eggs and like looking for all the stuff. And then I went down the deepest rabbit hole of podcasts and YouTube videos and interviews with the creators, like with the writers, with the directors, all the Easter eggs, all the secret stuff, all the secret sauce, all the things you maybe missed. And I just, I loved it. I was fully entertained. Was it perfect? No. Like nothing is gonna take the place of Scream. Nothing is gonna take the place of Scream. But there were some really great lines in it. There was some good humor to it. There was some shocking moments to it. And I just loved all the winks and nods. I don't know what they're gonna do with six. I am cautiously optimistic about six. And I still, I don't know, like one is still my favorite. I feel like there's a lot about two that I love. Then I would almost say Scream 5 slash Scream 2022, then three. I just love Parker Posey. I don't hate three as much as everybody else hates three. And like, I don't hate Roman. And I don't, Patrick Dempsey's a little bit weird in that one, but like, I don't know. There's elements of three that I like. I feel like Parker Posey and her and Courtney Cox together really take it to a different level with me where I just love the dynamic with Dewey. I just love. Um, and then four is still my least favorite. I can't, I can't rally around it. I can't do it. Nico Totorella, I absolutely love. Hayden Panettiere is great. I just can't rally around that movie at all. I just can't, I just can't. Adam Brody I love, but I just can't. I don't know, there's just something about it that I just cannot wholly, I don't know, it still just feels like the outlier. Oops, I just don't like it. I just don't like it. But I went down a very, very deep scream rabbit hole is my point. But now, so I am so deep 
in a This Is Us binge right now. I watched This Is Us when it first came out and I was a fan, I was hooked, I was at the TV Tuesday nights, whenever it is that it came out, like water cooler talk at work the next day. And then I stopped watching it in 2020 because I could not take the heaviness of it all. Like the world was too heavy for me then. I could not take heavy TV. And I just like took a hard right into like the bold type and anything with any kind of levity to it is what I was binging at the time. And then I just sort of, I don't want to say like I forgot about it, but I just was sort of like, whatever. And I caught an interview on E! because it's my news source. And it was Chrissy Metz and Chris Sullivan. And they were talking about how this is the last year of it, which I knew, but I hadn't been paying attention to it. And they were just talking about the show and they were showing like some old clips of things. And I was like, I really just loved this show so much. And I love everyone in it. And I love the storylines. And I was like, I'm kind of curious what they're going to do. So I was like, well, let me just sort of pick up where I left off, which turned out to be like the beginning of season four. So I have put so much time and energy into watching it. I just started season six last night. It has been the therapy I didn't know I needed. When I had talked about, I feel like I talked about this in my wrap up. I cried so much in the month of March. March was a month. And it's not just like magically over because the month is over, but I have cried every night that I have watched This Is Us and often multiple times and I'm not even mad about it. It is absolutely the cathartic situation that I need right now. And now I'm like, it is taking all of my self-control to not just sit on the couch and just watch like 10 hours of it. So I'm trying to like piecemeal it a little bit. I don't know how many episodes are left for me to watch. Like, I'm not sure where they're at in season six. I refuse to even look ahead. I don't even want to look at the screen grabs on Hulu because I've had shows be ruined for that for me. Where like, you'll just like look ahead and you'll see like the screen grab will be like two people kissing where you're like, they got together? Like what's happening? Like I'm 10 episodes behind. I didn't even know that was a thick thing. So like, I don't, I don't want to know. I don't want to know anything. Or if there's like a title of it that's like blank is dead or something like that, like I don't want to know. I had that happen to me. I listened to, I've talked about this before, I will listen to movie scores or TV show scores when I'm writing. So like I was listening to Defending Jacob. Right now I am obsessed with the This Is Us soundtrack. Oddly, I was finding the soundtrack, the, the, sound, um, the score for Scream to be oddly focus heavy for me at work. Don't even ask what's happening in this brain, you guys. There is one through four is on like one thing on Apple Music and then you can get five. But I was listening to a different TV show and I won't tell you what it is, but the title of the song from the TV show actually ruined something that happened in the show before I got to that part of it. So not, not, not great, not great, not great. So I try not to look ahead because I don't want to be spoiled for anything. So I am like, I, I am in it with This Is Us and I have feelings about how I want stuff to end. I just think the show is so smart. It is so well done. It's so well written. There is something in every character's story that has touched me in one way or another that I could relate to, an emotion, a feeling, maybe an actual experience I have had. Like it's just, I feel like it is such, such a universal show in so many ways. And I would love when all is said and done to find out if the writers, I feel like they said they knew how it would end when it ended, but not like all the in-betweens, but the way they weave so much from the past and pick up little threads that came out like in season one or season two, I don't know how much of that was there or how much of it is, what can we go back to and pull from to connect to this? But I just think it's so smart and from an entertainment standpoint, I love it. From just a purely well done, well acted show, I love it. And then from a writing perspective, I love it. I'm just fascinated by anything writing. And I've been listening to podcasts like it's 1999. I don't even know how I stumbled upon this one. Oh, I do know how. I was listening to, I was binging interviews with Rebecca Searle, who just wrote One Italian Summer which I had to go out and buy immediately and I haven't read it yet because I feel like I'm not emotionally ready for it. But I was listening to podcasts she was on and she was on that, it doesn't even matter why. But this is a podcast where they dissect movies and TV shows that came out in 1999 
and they talk about like the acting and the writing and the directing and the the guys who run it are writers and showrunners and show creators and they have other fellow writers and actors and showrunners and show creators that are on it but it's so incredibly fascinating to me let me find out their names for you guys okay sorry wanted to get it right so it's Kenny Nybart and Phil Iscove and they are writers and producers and they've worked on I want to say uh, Phil created and produced Sleepy Hollow and he's worked on Station 19 and Kenny Nybar worked on Entourage and like a whole bunch of other stuff. And it's just so fascinating to listen to them talk and they do, they have a whole recap of Felicity, they have Sex in the City, they have The West Wing and they do every kind of movie under the sun. So they've got Boondock Saints, they've got Fight Club, but they also have She's All That and Kevin Smith and like anything that came out in 1999 they are covering. This started back in 2018. I am obsessed. And these podcasts can be like two hours long, but they have guests on it, but they wind up going down so many different tangents. But I just find it so fascinating to listen to the behind the scenes and sort of the inside track and how the sausage gets made and even talking about a lot of these actors and actresses and writers and directors who were big back then or nobody back then and what they wound up becoming and just how different movies connect and what's inspired by other things. I am fully committed and hooked on this podcast. And then I've also been, I've been listening to this one for a while, but I'm still listening to Drama Queens, which is Sophia Bush and Hillary Burton and Bethany Joy Lenz talking about One Tree Hill. And they recap each episode and they have guest stars that come on and again they talk about where they were at at the time and they reflect back on things that were good and things that were not good they've all been super transparent about issues that happened on the set and it's so fascinating to listen to and the dynamic between them and their friendship and their relationships and it's just they talk about so much more and they're just so open and honest and it's just it's so interesting to listen to and i was such a huge fan of one tree hill so I love listening. I love listening to it, but those are kind of all the things that have been going on. I haven't been great with audiobooks. I keep borrowing and then they expire, but we'll see. I am still listening to slash reading Writing Down the Bones by Natalie Goldberg, which is a multiple reread for me for writing inspiration. And then I have a few other audiobooks that I've borrowed, but I haven't read yet, but I tend to like over borrow. And then if I get to it, I get to it. Like I said, I have Rachel's Holiday. I'm just looking to see what else I currently have taken out right now. I have The Lying Club by Annie Ward, which I had a Net Gelly arc of, but it was so messed up. I don't know if you guys have ever had this happen. Sometimes you get an E arc and it's just like all janky and the formatting and I, I literally couldn't read it. I've had this happen to me a couple of times, which was such a bummer, but I did get the audiobook of it. So I'm going to listen to that. And then I am still trying to work my way through Stop Self, Stop Self Sabotage by Judy Ho. Uh, I should probably read the book because I'm not doing great with stopping myself sabotage, but you know, we'll see what happens. We'll just absolutely see what happens. But anyway, it's been a month. It's been kind of crazy. Uh, can we talk about how allergy season is off the rails now too? Thank you, not, just no thank you. So it's just, it's just like I said, it's life, it's a season, it's been rough, but I'm fine. Everything's fine. Everyone in my universe is fine. It's just some days are harder than others. Some weeks are harder than others. Adulting is not fun all the time. And that's what's happening. So I just wanted to pop on, let you guys know, like I said, what was what, what I've been up to. And I'm going to continue to create at the pace that works for me. Some weeks that might be videos, some weeks it might not be. I am not committing either way to any kind of anything. But like I said, I just wanted to check in, say hey, see how everybody is doing and let you know how I'm doing. So with that, I am going to get out of here. I'm gonna make myself some lunch because I've been filming for quite a bit now and I'm hungry and it's still raining. So who knows about the walk? Um, and that's kind of it. I honestly, I just, I just wanna watch this sus. I just want to pop some popcorn and watch some This Is Us and um, cry some tears. So that's my plan. But until next time, everybody, I hope everyone's doing really well. I hope everyone is taking care. And if you are in a season, 
just know, like I keep telling myself, seasons come and go. So we will get through this like we get through everything else. But I love you guys so much. I appreciate you guys sticking around and being here and watching and supporting me. And I will see you guys really soon in another video. Take care, everybody. Bye.